welcome to my channel go digit today in this video we will cover the part 3 of the query object in the business central and in this part 3 we will learn about one of the type of query called api query type okay so in the part 1 and the part 2 video we have learned about how to create a normal query and then we have learned something about uh, if i show you here uh, about the sql join types then uh, how to use uh, the filter column and then how to write code with the with a query object okay so uh, like if i show you here so we have learned about how to write the code with the query object in the uh, in the pages uh, for the action buttons okay so now in the today's video we will learn about another query type which is called api query okay so let's create a new object uh, by typing t query so when you type here you will get this option that do you want to create a query of type api or a normal query okay this time i want to create a api query so i select that and now we have to change the uh, id of course and then we can name it as okay so what we want is that we want to check all the items which are a part of my sales line okay so here you see that <coughs> other than the <coughs> oh, sorry guys other than the normal uh, query object uh, in the api type query we get these uh, properties which we need to fill out okay so if you guys don't know about the concept of api so i have made a video uh, about how to create a api pages and what is the use of each of these properties okay and then how to access the api pages from it so i will i will attach a card here so that you can watch that concept uh, from that card okay so meanwhile now let's change the attributes of this query object for the api publisher because i am the publisher of this uh, this object this extension so i name it as go digit the group name uh, i can set out one group name let's say custom so for example in my extension whatever different api pages or different api queries i will create i will use them uh, or i will put all of them under one api group called custom okay for the version list this is my first version so let's name it version 1.0 only in the entity set name i can uh, you can see that set the singular entity name with which the query is exposed in the api endpoint okay so uh, let's name it as item order for singular and here let's set it's the plural entity name so plural entity name we can just type the same name and just add s here item orders okay so this is what we have set it now for our uh, api query in the business central guys uh, the use of these properties very much because when you try to access uh, this query because it's an api type query so you cannot directly view it in the web browser in the user interface of the business central or from the web services page as well okay it will be not visible uh, to the user interface to access it there is a special url and that particular url you have to make the use of api publisher api group api version and entity set name okay so the 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 if i show you the url the url of the api is something like https dot api dot business central dot dynamics dot com and then uh, the information about your api publisher which is in this case you can see that contoso is the api publisher then the group is a app one then api version which is 1.0 then you have to provide the information of your company id in case you are running the multiple company so you can present uh, put that information here and then of course the entity set name with this url you can easily access the access the information with respect to this api query if you guys finding it difficult to understand as i mentioned that i will attach one card here where i have explained everything about 
how to build this url how to access this url via postman and how to view the data and output accordingly for both on prem and the saas version of the business central please watch that before watching this video because then only you will understand the complete concept of the api okay so let's go back here so now here uh, let's build a normal query which we have built just like uh, here so for example i can i can type my first data item which in case it is item and then my first column because uh, guys uh, the very first column for any type of api whether it's a page or whether it's a query we have to type select it as id okay uh okay so now uh, this id is a default field for every table available in the business center okay sorry we have to use the different field here which is system id okay so system id is the default field unique field uh, of uh, which is available in every table of the business central whether it's a base table or whether it's a custom table which you are creating for your extension you don't you no need to uh, create this field manually it will be a part of every table okay which uniquely identifies your complete record okay then uh, of course i need some other columns so let me add other columns like number and then name sorry not name but description okay so now other than that let's me remove this filter i don't want to set any filter here at the moment so let's delete it now let's add another data item which will be sales line okay because i want the information of all the items against my sales order so let's do that let data item link as number is equals to item dot number okay so this is how i have set the link and now of course you can set the data item table filter based on whatever uh, type of uh, whether you want to access the records of only order or the invoice so you can set out this property i don't want to set out this property at the moment let's add the columns which will be document number of course and then another column which is quantity now in the quantity i want method as sum because in case a same item is available in multiple lines of that order so i don't want to uh, repeat uh, uh, the same item in my multiple lines of the results i just want the sum of the quantities against that particular item okay so that's it it's a normal query uh, code which we have uh, written uh, in the last parts of the video as well so uh, only change in the api query is that you have to set out these properties and uh, the way of accessing this uh, this type of api is a little different it will be not visible to your uh, sorry to your user interface right you will not be see here you cannot directly access your query just like i have shown you uh, in the last parts of the video okay and guys uh, as i was telling you about that this is my video which I, in which i have explained everything about api pages so the concept is same to access the api results okay via web browser or via the postman because the url is a little different so uh, you just have to check out this video first before you learn about uh, uh, before you access uh, or before you learn about this api query okay so uh, i think uh, it's a short video but uh, i understand because most of the part i have already covered in my previous video so i don't want to repeat it again so please watch that and then you are good to go with the api query as well okay so that's it in the today's video i hope uh, if you like this video please subscribe to my channel please like this video thank you so much for watching